Well, uh, as I was saying, I think that the idea here is to share with you the results that we got for the documentation translation for Portuguese uh, and talk about the workflow that we are using and the web tool that we use it to help us in the process. Okay, uh, let's go. We have a lot of slides here. Well, just to introduce, uh, I'm Edson Brandy. Uh, I'm the CIO of Stone, that's a payment processor in Brazil. Uh, I'm a founder of Brazilian Previous Day User Group uh, since 1995, uh, and I'm a Dot computer since 2012. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Paul and uh, I just go by Charlie. Um, I'm an undergraduate student at the University of Waterloo. Uh, I was a foundation intern, I was the first fact of the foundation intern in 2017, and after that, I became a documenter. Hello, uh, I'm Danilo Arvalho. I'm Danilo Bayo, I'm from Brazil, I'm from Brazil, and uh, I'm a part computer since 2017. Okay, uh, I'm just getting camera fingers. Okay, can you turn off the light of the box? Uh, okay, still better? Yeah. Well, the agenda for today is to talk about the uh, overview of the documentation project and uh, of why we need a better tool for the translation and to do an introduction to Zanata and Transform uh, and also to propose a workflow for the translations and then open for discussions. Well, this is a challenge that new groups that want to translate the previous, previous documentation will face when they choose to, to engage on this. Uh, we have 35 articles and eight books. It's a really big challenge. The Zanata, that's the tool that we are using, estimates that the translation will take like 5,500 hours. To do the translation. Uh, here we have a quick overview about the documents on the Zanata uh, interface, where you can see the estimative for the effort for each document. The handbook are estimated to take around 1,000 hours. Well, uh, I think that the truth about the translation workflow is that today it's very boring. It's very hard for us to keep the uh, volunteers engaged on the, the task. They really don't know how to handle the XML, they don't know how to handle the subversion, and it's pretty difficult for us to, to keep the documentation uh, translation project going on. Uh, as I said, I've been in Docker Computer since 2012, and we tried to do the translation multiple times. We tried to do a lot of things, and it was very hard for us to, to finish. Uh, yesterday night, I was able to commit the handbook in Portuguese, uh, completed, and uh, the web tool took for us around four months of work. Okay? Well, I think that the problem with the traditional uh, translation workflow is that the volunteers need to know the document structure. They need to do uh, to deal with dot books, the version uh, builds. They need to coordinate the translation and external repository. And each team has a different workflow, and they work separately. I think that the biggest trouble that we have is to gather people together to work on the project. It's very hard for us to uh, get these volunteers uh, working. And also it's very hard to track the, the updates. And with that, we had a lot of outdated translation. Portuguese documentation, for example, was like five, six years behind in terms of the, the, the content. There is a lot of information on a document that uh, Warren uh, published a few years ago when you introduced the PO system. 
Well, uh, the solution that was proposed a few years ago for, to, for us to improve the translation was the adoption of the PO. Uh, we introduced this like near four years ago, uh, but the, the volunteers is still needing to do with the uh, documentation structures, the version, they is still needing to, let's say, be like a hardcore translators. And what we see that works well is a casual translators. People that can take like 15, 30 minutes and sit, do the translation and move on. Uh, and traditional uh, PO uh, process doesn't follow that. Uh, it seems it's still separated. Uh, we don't have uh, files for the English documents. And when people start working on the translation, they still doing that alone. It's very hard to slice a document like it, uh, the PO for the handbook and coordinate that with the other guys. And uh, it, it's very difficult to, to move forward without uh, someone uh, coordinating the, the work. The number of PO files on the doc three today is still small. Uh, I think that the Brazilian Portuguese project was the one that moved uh, it on the, the project. The others are just the starting. Uh, I think that here can be a yeah, so uh, I, 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 I kind of the only person that uh, currently working on the simplified Chinese uh, documentation tree, and we tried some uh, different kinds of methods before this and uh, uh, the, the one method is that we try to slice the whole uh, PO file, and then we assign to each other, uh, to different people, and then we use GitHub for the version of and merging. But, uh, then we realize that it's not really the subversion that causes error. It's it's the lack of the whole automation and the complete workflow, and it, so that a casual translator will take a lot more time to learn how to use the documentation and how uh, how to uh, contribute for for their first commit. And uh, we uh, we actually came up with a different workflow that's a little bit simplified, but it's not gonna solve the problem just because uh, it, it's still text-based. It's not fully utilizing the uh, potential of this uh, format. And actually, the next one. Yeah. And uh, we have to track all the pro progress by hand, uh, by our eyes, uh, as well manually. So, and uh, at the start, there are, uh, there are like 20 volunteers that I uh, uh, that are either friends with me or. Uh, uh, and then they, most of them got discouraged, uh, even with the GitHub workflow that people, I assume they have some knowledge on the, uh, they, and if I push them to know the SVN, it would be harder, but it still discouraged people, and then I got like two or three left that sticks, just sticks around with me. So uh, this just got abandoned as well. So we need a better solution for character translator to translate at any time, anywhere, preferably in web browsers. Well, the idea for a web tool for the translation come, comes to us after we saw what PepSense was doing. They did the translation for almost 20 languages, and they got more than 400 volunteers working on that. Uh, and wasn't a big change on the process. What they it, to work is just a web tool that helps they to put people working together, where people that like spec sense can go uh, subscribe and take a screen or two and do the translation and move forward. Uh, and the only uh, website that we have for the the to use a web tool is the PO system, and the PO system is already in our tree. Uh, this is a view of the Zanata interface for PepSense project, just to show that they have many languages, almost near 100% translated. And what's the use case of Zanata for FreeBSD? Uh, here you can see the main screen for the, the server that we are running right now. Uh, 
Brazilian initiative uh, are working on that for like nine, mon nine months uh, until now. We have 35 articles translated and five books also translated, including the uh, handbook. And we managed to get over 40 uh, volunteers working in a weekly base on the process. Uh, otherwise, it would be very difficult for us to, to finish the documentation in, in that short time. For the Spanish, they are working on the same server for like five months. They already translated uh, 18 articles, and there is two volunteers working on that. And for Chinese, as uh, yeah, it's just it's just getting started, and uh, it's mainly because we don't have an official server, and, and the, the server official server for Zanta is kind of unstable these days. And uh, currently, we're using uh, self-hosted server, so I like to wait for. Uh, Official server to come on before we uh, before I try to recruit more people. Yeah, uh, uh, with this little work we will we help a lot on the marketing to get people trusting on the initiative to collaborate with the translation. We can move to this. Well, what's the advantage that this web tool brings to us? Uh, we have more contributors. People don't feel um, intimidated by the size of the document because they know that they will get help on that. Uh, we can have FreeBSD documents translated in more languages. We have a smaller lead time to get these documents out for the public. It's easy to review and update the translations, what helps us improve the quality because uh, we can have more eyes looking into the document. And we have less uh, outdated documents. Uh, what we are doing uh, is not just using a web tool for the translation, but we build a small ecosystem around it. We are doing a sync with the Zanata uh, files with the GitHub that we use it for backup purpose when we are was using the offshore Zanata public web server because we don't have any rights and no control of, uh, about the infrastructure, we can move. We also uh, built uh, Jenkins automation to help us to track the progress on the, the translation and see if people are not breaking the build because sometimes the translators try to translate the text and that break the process. Uh, and we also need, we can move, we also need to provide a draft for the translated document for the volunteers see the result of the work, right? And we are doing this build based on commits on GitHub and uh, to, uh, twice a day from the Zana. Yeah, I just want to weigh in there that sometimes uh, uh, cargo translators are afraid that they might that we might lose their work or like they can't yes. see the results instantly, like near instantly. And they, uh, it, it, so this way what we're doing with uh, daily build uh, they can see how they actually impact the whole organization. Yeah, well, one important thing to mention is that on this effort that we did for Brazil, the big challenge that I had to deal is with the big documents because we started with the articles that are small, they can see the results pretty fast. But for the handbook, we only committed the document to the tree when we finished. And finished means that we do the translation and at least a second person do the review to ensure that the tests are correct. And this takes like four months. Many people don't have patience to wait four months to see the hours that they are donating to the project going out. And with, with documents and also in the, the reviewing process. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes, Sometimes it's easier to review reading the final uh, book than the, this, the code of this analysis. Uh, we also use it. Uh, a trick to speed up the beginning of the process that was uh, a draft version of the initial translation printed by machine learning using Google APIs. Because at least in Brazil, many of the volunteers doesn't know very well English, then they prefer to have some kind of guidance about the content. Then they can repeat the, the, the phrase and do the correct translation. Uh, one of our contributors created a Python script that was transformed uh, that reads the PO file and do the translation of the strings. 
And the result was very good for Brazilian Portuguese. We obviously need to do a lot of changes on the final test, but this is speed up a lot of the, the, the translation. Uh, there is a cost to use the APIs. We have like here nine million words to characters to, to translate. And the cost, estimated cost for that is around $108 on Google. Uh, but they give 300 as a, a gift for everyone that uh, create an account. Then we was able to do the translation without need to pay uh, any money. Do you have to, sorry, uh, do you have to give a credit to Google for the translation? Mm, we created the account on GCP. They put three hundred dollars on your account as a credit for you. Oh, right. No, 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 I mean a uh, credit. <coughs> credit. Oh, credit card. No, no, no. no translation no, no. services like Microsoft and Google, no. they say you can use our results, but you must say this was translated with the help of uh, Microsoft Translate or Google Translate. No. But you're not using the little no, translation. No. no. No, not a, it, this is actually this is only using. I think we're only using it for initialization. Like yeah. when we import the new like the, the handbook, we do the translation once and we mark it as fuzzy, and then the people at least the people the translation. We will modify it and then that's a final. But, so but if you if we use the, this kind of service as a, a basis of the translation, and the, it requires uh, some credit and some acknowledgement to. The service we have to put the, some abbreviation to the, for example, the, this is uh, we are using the Google translation system on that. Yeah, uh, I, I we look did it. Uh, we that. need to double check the term of use okay. of the service. <laughs> okay, okay. I, I, I don't think that would be a big problem, but it's just something to keep yeah. in mind. Yeah, the, uh, the final test that are published on the SDN wasn't the original uh, automated translation that was done. The Brazilian contributors use that like a, a dictionary or something like that, just to, to speed up the, the process. Okay, but uh, I'm sure that matters. But yeah. Well, if it, yes. it would be easy enough to add a thing to the translated version that said some portions of this yeah. were provided by, yes. or something like that. Yeah, I, I don't see a problem. Uh, and in fact, the tool helped us a lot to, to get started. Yeah. Okay. Uh, here is an example of the main interface for the translation. On the left, you have the original document. On the right, you have the translated tests. You can see some small uh, glyphs that we got for, for the transform that's mainly related to the spa white spaces. The, they put white spaces in places that was not supposed to, to have. But the quality of the translation for simple phrases was pretty good. It doesn't need to, to do many changes. Uh, one important thing to mention is that we, as I said, tried a lot of things to get volunteers working on the project, right? And the, the thing that gave us the best result was Swax. We make a, made a kind of contest uh, the volunteer that uh, sent us most translated documents or more streams gets a swag. And we have at the shirts, uh, uh, I don't have don't have the word on the for the on the phone. Uh, well coats. Yeah, exactly. And we also have some Hesper Pi and some uh, Arduino. Uh, and people feel motivated to, to help, and they get a small gift for helping us on that. The, the swags was coming from donations that we got from some companies in, in, in Brazil, and this helped us to, to keep people working, because uh, in long documents, they came, they work one day, they disappear, and you need to go today and bring them back, and the gift is helping on this process. You can go. Well, uh, here we have an uh, overview on Zanata. There is a lot of screens. I think that we can go fast just to, to give you an idea about what we can do. Uh, Zanata, you have a visual uh, indicator about the status of the screens. The gray one is uh, empty. There is no translation, just the original. The yellow is the first. is a kind of initial gravity for the translation. 
the green is the translated, uh, and the blue is the final one after the last review. In a normal workflow, you can have three different persons going through the same string to make sure that the translation are correct. The first one could, from gray to yellow, the other one from yellow to green, and the last one from green to blue, okay? Um, it's pretty easy to add a new language. It's just a, a, a matter of a few clicks on the interface, and the new language will use the same originals that we have uh, from English. Uh, the users that you have on the platform can have, have multiple goals. You can have just a translator, you can have a translator and a reviewer, and also uh, permission to create the glossary that will help us to keep the consistency uh, uh, along the project. Translate consistently? Yes. Uh, here is an example of some validations that you can configure on the platform that help us to detect if the tags are being broken or if there is some kind of violations uh, that can compromise the final results. You can get one. Here is an example. Uh, on the top of the screen, there is a, a miss, uh, the tag where name is missing a slash, and when the end user the translator fix, the message disappears. There is pretty visual for people working on the translation that they miss something. Uh, if they change the order, if they break the, the tag, if they put an extra white space, they will have a visual indicator of that. Uh, you also can track the changes because, as I said, you can have like three persons work on the same string. On the two, you can see the changes that one translator did on the string and uh, compared to the other. And you can uh, reverse the translation if there is a problem, or you can uh, just understand who did the, the mistake. But sometimes you, you need to to make people understand that they are breaking the, the tool. If it changes just a word, the, the tool will highlight that word. Yeah. So it's like a, <coughs> if, if you have uh, multiple translations of something, can a reviewer pick the one they like the best? Uh, I think that the translator, they just accept or not the translation. But uh, someone can go after that and choose one of the previews. But it's not pretty intuitive to, to do that. The interface is not that good. Okay. Uh, you also have the translation uh, level uh, that helps to see if a term, a word, are being used multiple times and if there is consistency between the translations. Uh, and here you can also see where the word are appearing, and uh, if it's consistent or not with the previous translations. You can export the, this memory uh, for many reasons. You can do that to using our project, or just for the couple of tools. Uh, and also help us to, to see uh, the glossary function. You, you can have uh, a few of your volunteers with homes to create this document, and then when they are doing the translation and they have a doubt about how to translate, they can just look up on the glossary and use a, a, a standard for that. And one very important thing is that you can see if the volunteers are translating the same string differently and then you can fix that, help us to have the consistency. Uh, you also have a kind of a social feature on the tool that allows you to have a chat with the others that are working on the document. And you can see what they are doing and this helps. For us, in Brazil, we prefer to use Telegram. It's much better for us, but there is an embedded chat on the internet. There is a web client that is very useful for us uh, to push and pull documents from the server. 
Uh, it's very useful for the automation that we do. Let's go to the workflow proposal. Well, do you want to say? Uh, sure. Yeah, so I made uh, a simple workflow uh, flow chart this morning uh, that basically show how the, the complete system works. So we start from the 3D documentation tree. We use the original English XMLs to generate the PO file, and then uh, you have some scripts to convert it to POT files, which is a template for Zeneta. And then we uh, push it to Zeneta. Then um, for the first initialization, uh, some, uh, some, some language teams choose to use uh, Transpopy. Uh, for the initial, uh, it's for calculating the initialized uh, the, 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 the draft, the, the draft uh, using Google API, uh, and uh, so so you export the PO file from uh, from Zenata and then use the transform for uh, initial translation, and then it push back to and we can push it back to Zenata and GitHub, uh, and uh, as uh, as I just said. Uh, Zeneta also do daily views using uh, Jenkins and deploy it, uh, deploy a web version uh, for for anyone to view. And uh, I think, yeah, and it also pushed to you know, yeah. And anything to add? No, I think that you cover all. Yeah, uh, and uh, here is a workflow and the colors that we uh, we use to explain. So. Uh, from the original document, and, and it actually also shows the responsibility of different roles in this tran uh, translation workflow. So we have coordinators, uh, which are now committers, and we have uh, reviewers, which are now committers, but we will probably add more people we, that we trust uh, as the project goes on. And then we have contributors, which is supposed to open to anyone who wants to join and help. Uh, so, and then we start from the original documents, we uh, generate and export it uh, from the SDN, and the coordinator contributors uh, will either choose to use untranslated version or use an initialization uh, draft. Uh, and then it, in the Zeneca system, if it's untranslated, it's great. So when we are updating the, the template, the, there will be new sentences and they will be marked as great. And, uh, but if we use uh, Transpopy, it will be marked as yellow, uh, which are like fuzzy machine translators that need to be verified and translated by human. And this is the this part is the contributor work uh, work workspace. And then contributor will turn either these two states into a green state uh, in Zeneta, which is the, the human translated and is pending for review. And then the reviewers will come in uh, to either say this is not good, we need another translation, or if they just jump in and fix it, or if it's good enough, then we mark it as blue, so it's already reviewed. And uh, when this whole book or uh, is completed, uh, the coordinators or the committers will uh, commit it back to the tree. So these are the four states in Zanata that uh, represents uh, the different states of either every sentence. Uh, it's also very easy to do a update when we have a new content on the document. Uh, the new PO will generate a new uh, file that we convert to pop, and when we upload that to Zanaka, the system do a, a zip and mark as a fuzz all the strings that change. Then it's pretty easy for us to just filter and work uh, to change the test or to redo the translation if there is a big change. It's pretty easy to, to do this maintenance. Well, uh, I think that the idea now uh, it's open to discussion. Uh, we have some points here that we want to talk. It's mainly regarding the possibility to, to have a Zanata server inside the cluster. Uh, for us, in, for, at least for uh, Portuguese, we are using a self deployed server. But if we have an optional server, it will be easier for us to bring more volunteers on board and speed up the process. And we can also let other uh, translation teams use the same uh, process that uh, proved to work uh, in these last months. Uh, we have proposed a uh, WebHelp for the server. 
uh, we will need uh, Apple Store and give it GitHub or SVN to do the automation for the, the fields. Probably we do need a new option on the product reports to help people to contribute over there if they want. And a, a job on Jenkins to generate the daily feed that will help the, the volunteers to see the result of the work. Um, in terms of the languages uh, that are already used in Zanata, right now we have Portuguese, Spanish, and Chinese. Uh, and we have the option to add all other languages that we want. Uh, we can do that uh, from the beginning without having a specific coordinator for that. Or we can open these new languages only when we found someone that will be in charge of ensuring the quality of the translations. Uh, there, is some, there is some groups that are doing translations right now, like the Japanese and uh, Denmark, uh, uh, German. German. and they are not using the EPO system. They are doing directly on the XML. But maybe they find it interesting to, to change. Right. The problem with that is it's very difficult to do the initial conversion to PO because there is no automated tool to do that. Uh, and it's not to mention to actuals. Yes, it's a, a, a brief path dependency is what they call it. Once you've started down that road of porting and you have a significant amount of work in there, yeah. it's very difficult to get started. But uh, I can't see, I mean, uh, Marc Bonnier is very dedicated and works on the French translation too. The, the Germans have a small group of people that work on their translation a lot, but I can't see new teams doing it that way as opposed to PO. It's, yeah, it's just too uh, much work. For Portuguese, we choose to trash out the previous translations and we do everything from the scratch because it was easier for us to redo the translation than to import and convert to port. I, I spent a lot of time looking for an automatic tool that would do that conversion, and it seems like it's so much work and so difficult to do, and it's for a one-time use, that one-time switchover that nobody's yeah. ever bothered to, to put a lot of work into that. Uh, and it might not work that well anyway. But yeah, I think uh, kernel workflow, uh, I mean, uh, for some languages use Zamena and some languages use uh, uh, PO, all the PO system, uh, it's not, all the XML system. Uh, there is no conflict between those two languages, uh, those two groups. I'm trying to remember, um, once you did the uh, traditional Chinese translation, <coughs> I believe they actually, uh, I'm trying to remember how they did it, they had a manual translation and they like used pieces of that pasted into the PO editor, so they did reuse some of that work, I believe. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I can't remember <coughs> the name. Is that uh, you and Jeff? Uh, no, it's not, it's not me, but no, I no, no, I'm the, 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 the dentist, the, the guy yeah. who, yeah. the dentist and a friend did yes. that whole handbook in exactly. six months. <laughs> just, uh, just one or two people. It, yeah, it was very impressive. Okay, let's vote. Uh, well, then there is a question about who will be the reviewers, if we are going to keep that only for committers, or if we can promote to reviewers people that show good skill on the translation. Uh, I think that it will be easier for us to have more languages if we open this uh, role for the community. Uh, the coordinators right now uh, are only committers. Uh, we can Maybe these uh, coordinators came from like the evolution path. They start as a translator, then a reviewer, maybe a coordinator. But, but we need to decide that. Uh, it's like a question for us to discuss later if we are going in one direction or the other. Uh, for the contributors, I think that the best approach is free for all. People can uh, subscribe and they ask you to join a translation team. And in this way, we can have like casual translators that will help like the five, 10 minutes per day. And in the long run, this will add a lot and help on the process. Uh, I think that we cover that. Uh, 
Um, we need to decide if the document will be pushed to SDM uh, when they are in green status or blue status, or could easily choose to do that on blue. But this almost double the time that you need to, to finish the document, and some people don't have patience to wait. Then there is a trade off that we need to, to decide. Uh, I think that the quality is very important. Then my suggestion is maybe keep on blue, but get able to publish the document before it's 100% translated. I'm not sure if this is acceptable, but it helps, I think. The, the problem we had is some language teams are there one person or none. Yeah. And so it's very difficult to get somebody who could review it. You know, there's that, that self-starting problem where if somebody's translated it, but it still needs to be reviewed and you have nobody else to review it. Yeah, yeah I understand. But I think in, in that kind of situation, uh, we can trust that uh, person who initialized it because he should have some passion and uh, understandable knowledge. About oh, well, I don't, I'm the suspicious type, so I'm not worried about you know technical problems so much as somebody going in and translating it to an ad for something else. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not worried about accidental mistakes. People make those, it's no problem. Mm -hmm. I'm more worried about intentional malicious uh, Yes. Oh, okay. uh, and the, the one way to go around about that, which we talked about, uh, was uh, doing back translation to English or some other language. If you don't have any trusted people to commit that first version in the translated language, machine translate it back to English or some other language and review it there. Mm -hmm. Or we can ask uh, among, among the developers if there is any one, I mean, the reviewer doesn't have to be a that computer. Right. Someone oh, oh yes, but some of those reviews could be huge. It hmm? could be like the entire handbook. Yeah. Or, uh, so uh, there's there's ways around that. You could break it up, say review this section, mm -hmm. or review random, 10 random pieces out of it and say, yes, we, we think it's all wrong. Mm -hmm. I think uh, we can deal this problem when we really, when really a new language volunteer comes in and we can ask among the developers and uh, find somebody we can trust uh, to review or just yes. verify or just let us know that translator is trustworthy. Yes, yeah. and that's a problem we'd really like to have. You oh, know, yeah. like, <laughs> you know, we have all these translations that are new yeah. and ready to go, we think. Yeah. Exactly. Do we have a language uh, uh, where there is no uh, Reviewer? Reviewer, yeah. The I reviewer don't itself. think so right now. So we need to postpone this kind of discussion. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. 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 Adopting this. Well, we do, but we do get email people saying, I would like to translate this portion. I, I looked and I'm trying to remember. I, I was thinking Spanish, but maybe Italian or something. The, the translation that's in there is very old. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. it's like, yeah. I would like to help translate this. It's like, okay, with one person, we don't. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, but with this, they, yeah, with start. this, yeah, they can stage their their trans draft, uh, translated draft uh, on on the draft side. Then uh, we can say uh, after ten percent of the documentation has been translated, we uh, find a trustworthy reviewer, and then try to have a committer to bring that to the official site. Yeah, if, we, if that's really a problem, I guess we can ask. Uh, Foundation to find some translation uh, consultant agency to to help that if we really cannot find a volunteer or uh, bring it up at, e at events like this. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. In, in, if the, the new contributor is starting translate the small documents, I think it will be more easy to uh, to find some reviewers inside the the developers. But if they, they translate the handbook, it's that's yeah, that's a big yeah. job. But then there are a lot of these small documents, like you know, all the <coughs> articles. So if they can start there. It's a good try. Uh, well, 
Uh, we are also giving the credit for the contributors on the PO file, the Zanata Power, the names and emails on this, uh, but we are also adding the, the users to the, the proper documentation. Uh, for them, it's important they, they feel the pride that they have uh, contributed to the documentation. Uh, for the, the documents to update, what we are doing right now is a monthly update. Uh, once a month, we go there, get the originals, and put that through the Zanata, and then do the updates. We are aware that this like three times. I don't know. That was three times since we started using the PO. And if we adopt that before the, the project, we need to decide if we are going to do monthly or quarterly. I think that on the beginning, maybe will be a lot of reworking and people feel the most painful if the progression goes down because of the change, we need to decide. Um, Could you go weekly? We can do that day. Uh, <laughs> so, so, no, it's, it's not as bad as build. Yeah. <laughs> what, what happens when we do that on, and we don't translate it with the strings that change it? This will appear in English on the, the final document. It will not be a, a, a white space or a, a, a blank uh, section on the document. It will be just in the original language. Okay. So couldn't you arrange that or set it up so that if the, uh, well, yeah, you want people to be able to see what they've what they've done, but you don't want the non-translated sections to hold that. Hold uh, uh, actually, I think there's a difference between you know sy uh, sync up with the English version and then commit it back. Yeah, it, it's not like we're committing it back as soon as we sync up with the Zanata. It's exactly. like we achieve 100 percent and then put it back. So even if we do do a sync up, it's just the translator. The translator will always do new content. It's, it's not, not like a, a, a matter of the volunteer doesn't see a document that was 90% complete going back for, let's say, 885. Uh, it's, it's just a, a strategy. Uh, and when we do these updates, we can send uh, a notification to a specific mail list to let people know that there is new paths to be translated. Uh, uh, I think that another question I got here. I think the in the, in this workflow the, uh, the the committed back to the doc tree is up to the originator's discretion. It's not like the best schedule or anything. It's basically the yeah. their call to see if it is ready to run. So this will I don't think that will affect that much. Yeah, the handbook that I did the commit yesterday was like a one month and a half old, and now I'm going. To do an update and push probably by next week uh, and have it synced with the last English version. Good. So are you guys going to sync a little more frequently or, or based on like a, an upcoming release of previous DPO 13 or whatever? Is that going to change your schedule at all? Mm, for us, it doesn't make a difference. I think that in this case, it's more regarding my time to do the review. Uh, I choose to have the document complete and push it to SDM. 100% uh, in Portuguese, and now I will go and do the uh, catch up with these two months of changes and publish again. Uh, we can do that in, in the, the frequency that we want, right? right. The only limitation is the time. It would be nice to have those as a release, but again, yeah, that's, that's a new release mode. That would really be a nice yeah. problem to have. It's like, yeah. it's like, oh, we're ready to release 13, and we have 24 languages translated. Are they all up to date? That would be really nice to say, yeah. oh, I wish they were all up to date, but we have. Maybe one day. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, for the, for the next steps, uh, and to open for the discussion, uh, I, the big question here is, if you think that makes sense to expand this experience that we have for Brazilian development to the other languages, it makes sense to have an official server to help the, the, the project to get more volunteers, and what we can do to help this to happen. That's the idea. Yeah. I think that this is the last slide. Yeah, that's right? the last yeah. <coughs> uh, I have a couple questions about that. Um, 
At IX, we had uh, we used Poodle for a while. P O O D L E. Yeah. Uh, it it turned out to be a uh, we really needed somebody to maintain it, and then we switched to Weblate, uh, which is a similar idea but probably better implemented. And that also you really need somebody to manage that server. Uh, what what does Zenata need? I mean, is it like a Python web application or it's Java? It's Java. <laughs> yeah. uh, for changing a main build layer on they have layer on host, uh, and they test the last using uh, with uh, Brazilian translation. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the new builds are port for Zenata server um, that if you want to be capable, and it's already on the port right now. The server is simple. It's, it's not complex to, to maintain, but I'm not sure if he had, I have to do keep maintaining the code now that they are invoked by VM. Uh, I, but we I, can use any web tool. I think that we was using Zanata, but if we understand that's better to use another one, I think that the workflow will, will be pretty similar. Yeah, but that that was the problem that we had. Uh, it was you need somebody to maintain. I, I believe it was managing the, uh, well, you need somebody to curate it. Uh, yeah. Do the database stuff that comes up and web management and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's the reason why I'm here. Yeah. And, uh, uh, so uh, that's why, and then that's why I propose we have a translate dash dev at the first as the pool of a concept uh, to let uh, others can test and let's see how this uh, workflow works or not. Yeah. And it's just generated to have a playground or something, even if we have a visual server, like we can test. Right. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think uh, just like a uh, uh, fabricator, fabricator it is started with a uh, review dash dev, and uh, uh, many people just use it uh, or they just play with it as a sandbox to, to try to find a problem. And uh, yeah, I know, I understand that uh, just hosting, hosting a service on your own server, uh, your, your machine is much different than hosting a service in FreeBSD or the cluster. There is much higher uh, standards to, 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 to have a service layer because uh, there are so many uh, security considerations. Yeah. But uh, yes, uh, I mean uh, that should be that shouldn't be the uh, roadblock of testing new things. I agree. Yeah. Um, we are hosting as uh, another instance in DigitalOcean. Yeah. Yeah. Digital and it's basically a, a simple Java application with. Uh, MySQL database, and I think it's it's pretty pretty, pretty stable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, <coughs> I have more concern about the the, the security. security. Yeah, security because uh, it's the nature of Java has a very broad uh, attack interface. So yeah, but uh, uh, we can try to isolate. Uh, in another V then and uh, try in the run it only in, inside the jail. Yeah. I mean, uh, we need to figure out this along with uh, class and needs. Yeah. For the other possibility is uh, we can just uh, uh, have a freebd.org domain point to, yes, to our uh, digital ocean yeah. uh, instance. Mm. But for that, we need to consider about uh, cold site cookie things because we might uh, issue cookies for freebd.org domain. Yeah. yeah, but uh, that's the implementation detail. The first thing uh, in this working group is we need to figure out uh, uh, how to use uh, Lameta. If, the, if there anything we can imp uh, improve with of this uh, working workflow. Yeah, I think the important thing here is really the workflow. It doesn't really matter the what kind of the application that we use. If we see that we can switch to other applications or the workflow if it makes sense we can uh, discuss it and uh, implement it. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
that was uh, one thing we talked about once the, the PO stuff was working. And my concern at the time was saying, if we have a, a web application, it lowers the barrier to entry, which is a good thing. Uh, but we want to make sure that either that web application or the base 3BSD doc system will let you, does not force you to use that. Because I think that think of that as like telling people that they have to use Emacs as an editor and can't have them, right? Or VI or whatever. But I, I feel like sure. that would, uh, and I still feel, and I'm not sure about this, but I still feel that the, the CJK languages are probably uh, some PO editors are very suited to that, and some are probably not. Uh, I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I mean, for me either. Well, the PO itself does not support the CJK query. So if we do not use the EDSA, it, 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 there is a, a lot of problem with the APK in PO lab. So there is a lot of the reason why the JP um, John Foundation do not adopt the uh, PO file as well. Do you mean that uh, uh, using PO we need to have the lo uh, localized the document as uh, using uh, UTF-8 character? It, it should be. Yeah. You sh should be. And the currently, uh, uh, Japanese translation is not using UTF-8. Oh, no. it's no. still so in it, the directory means it's I, I, there, I have a script that needs two, two or three years ago I wrote a script that the I am working on converting the, all the languages that we yeah, get right now. <laughs> so it needs to be done. Yeah. It, it has needed to be done. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is and there it, any reason if other than no time uh, we cannot have all the documentation to convert to UTF-8? Uh, there is really two reasons. Uh, one is uh, it is difficult for me to check all the language oh, okay. is completely uh, uh, correctly converted. And the second one is uh, we have to have to have a discussion about the directory name. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah it, it contains it's the same encoding name and it appears in the URLs in the various documents, uh -huh. yeah, including the various related documents. So we cannot change the uh, encoding part. Easily to the file with a thousand redirects. I have to admit that uh, I didn't know these things when I convert <laughs> yes. tra traditional Chinese, and yes. uh, I <laughs> <Yeah>. might <laughs> made a lot of problems. Yeah, so the problem is uh, in the English documentation only because the translation documents do not leave that, are not referred from the other uh, external documents. Mm -hmm. But uh, I, E-N-U-S, ISO 8859, uh -huh. and one is uh, here is everywhere, yeah. so we cannot change the directory name as well. Oh, good redirect. Uh, yes, of course. Yeah. And, and then you end up with a horrible file to maintain for your web server, but everybody has those. Yeah. For Portuguese, we are using UTF-8, but the URL is still the, the old. It's still, it's still, yeah, yeah, still using the old directory name. And I have a couple of questions about the Nazanata workflow. Yeah. So first one is, uh, what is the difference between the reviewers and the translators in the system? Do we need to differentiate the two roles, actually? Uh, you mean where on the system is this difference? Yeah, yeah, difference. It's, they put a flag on the database. Oh, yes, but uh, uh, why do we need to differentiate the uh, reviewers and translators in practice? Because uh, users are motivated to translate the documents. Well, uh, probably they can be reviewers at the same time the translators. Yes, so it's in my understanding, uh, the benefit of that is mm -hmm. that you can easily control and make sure that more than one person read and check at the translation. So, and in theory, a reviewer would be more trusted, right? Oh, yes, yes of course. Yes. But uh, in practice, yes. so how, how many people are uh, just a reviewer and just a translator? In uh, in, in, in for Portuguese, yes. we have uh, 36 translators and four reviewers. Myself, Danilo, and the other two. Oh. And when couldn't this work like uh, uh, commit this? You start out as somebody who would be a contributor, 
and then after you've done a yes. certain amount of stuff, you promote them that, to that you. What we did for the other two reviewers. They helped us with the translation, and after they proved to us that they are, was doing a good job, and the quality was good, we give more permissions. Right? Yeah. That's what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one thing about, about Granada, that the, the, the people can use another tool to translate. Uh, one example, uh, in the Parker's Handbook, we have a section that, that we need to, to put all the revisions of, of, of our, our release. Yes. Yeah. And there are a lot of updates. And uh, one contributor uh, pulled the, the PO file and made a script, translated all the, the dates, and then pushed push it back to the yeah. to Zanata. So if, if a, a person wants to work offline, to, uh, yeah, to work offline, they can. And Zanata provides a, a, the Zanata client. It's a console, a console client that helps you to push and pull the late translations. So it's very useful. Yeah. We, we, we use this tool to, uh, to build the documents with the And then another question is, uh, uh, is, is there a way to use another system not using the editor part in a web application? So for example, the some existing developer like the day one editor in a local environment, and a, they, they want to edit the file. Right. So it is possible to get uh, so feel like uh, file yes. from the standard app. You use the client's version, the console version, to pull the, the file. You can edit the file with the editor that you want, like yeah. Vim, Max, or PO edit. And then you can push the file back to the system. And oh. the others can collaborate on the, the web interface without any problem. Yeah. So what kind of version control is used in the standard system in that case? I don't know the internals. Uh, no, 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 in the appearance. It's actually over here. Right. In a database? Right. Or uh, just export it to the GitHub or well, something like that? We use uh, GitHub to, to track the changes, but are you asking about the Zanata? The Zanata? Yeah, the yeah. Zanata yeah. Okay. So it is separating like. So you're talking about like merge conflicts? Yes, for the conflicts and probably a uh, uh, workload by a uh, workload of the users who are using the web interface and uh, another one likes the using their own the editors. So for this final oh, part, we, well, we did talk about you can have more than one translation. Yes, uh, from different people. Yes, I, I think that the Zanata interface will will merge the the strings like when we run a make PO in our print, when it, get, uh, it gets the, the English new strings and mm -hmm. merge to the, to Each the PO. user will have an API key mm -hmm. that you use to configure the client. Mm -hmm. And based on this API, the Zanata server knows which user pushes the document. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the start, uh, the revision, oh, yeah. you can see who pushed the, the tab. So the vision is uh, internally managed in the system. Yeah. And then, okay. Yeah. So, and then you have to have a database. Yeah. Thanks so much. Interesting. And yeah, uh, our, our experience with Zanata is more like an end user experience, right? Because we just installed the tool mm -hmm. and use it. We didn't go through the source code and try to understand how is the the magic behind the scenes. And the third question is, uh, what if we change the location or file name drastically in the top three? What happens in the system? It will not make any difference because all the files today are generated with the language code name and you can just change the, the name of the file. It's and just one well, PO file. Yes. Right, but, but you know, I think he's talking about not just the directory remove, but uh, restructuring. Yes, the small files 
uh, for the Hamilton, for example. Yeah, right. But but your translation memory is what would save you yeah. in that case. Where yeah, you say, but, oh, I know all these but, things. But right. remember that when we use the make trap on the doc tree, uh, it will generate just one file, one XML file. For example, the, the book, mm -hmm. for the handbook, the book the XML has like uh, almost four megabytes mm -hmm. because they grab all the smaller files and just generate a huge one. Mm -hmm. And this huge one is the, the file that was tracked and managed by the platform. Then if you just create a new uh, a chapter or you remove a chapter in a different file, yeah. uh, the make trump that we already have today on the tree will handle that, will not be done. Mm -hmm. uh, the dev path changes yeah, you you did you permit to uh, translate again the screen that, that probably, but you your translation will already have hundred percent human translated strings for all those yes. strings, so it should just be yes, I, right? I yes. approve these and but I or it might not even. Be we that. not go to that yet on this uh, last month, but. The translation me translation memory was supposed to help us on that because you have this thing, just use the same. Yeah. And uh, the last one is uh, I uh, here I'm working on uh, now is that uh, so the our biggest problem on translation project is uh, we cannot build officially the handbook. For example, the uh, if you have uh, one section, the translation is also one section, we cannot publish it because uh, uh, handbook requires the remaining a big part mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we cannot publish the uh, untranslated part in the uh, language. So I think we have to migrate on a, a current structure the XML system to a uh, more translation friendly. So we are uh, now using the VO workflow. So VO workflow basically generates the current XML file, uh, uh, the VO file on the current XML file. But uh, so uh, my idea is uh, uh, eliminating the generation. So we can use the original XML file plus the difference, so XML file. So there is a specification of the so localization. Uh, the XML specification for localization, it names XLIF. Probably it's another support to XLIF format. It's an it's a XML file, a XML file, PO file. Yeah. And uh, so the advantage of the XML based the PO file is the uh, complete support of the CKK uh, encoding or other. Uh, programmatic part of the equally handling because XML completely supports the, uh, that kind of uh, uh, corner case. So uh, my suggestion, my, my proposal to the current doc tree is uh, we have uh, one directory structure for original English version plus, so each file has a difference uh, between the English and the other language. So for example, the article.xml has article.jda.xml, for example, in the same directory. Mm -hmm. So no, uh, uh, no independent directory for each language. So we eliminate all the language directory and uh, put the uh, file, uh, so, so translate the file yeah, so next to the uh, original document. But the, that, that file, only contains the so sentence by sentence translation structure mm -hmm. in XML, like a PO file. Mm -hmm. So uh, build process uh, generates the by using the two files, the original files and the difference file. So uh, build system pick up the translated version if it is the latest, but if not, the English version mm -hmm. is picked up. So uh, results, uh, XML file, HTML file, or PDF file will contain uh, so latest version of the English if it is not translated, and the, if translated, the uh, translated version will appear mm -hmm. transparently. Uh, my first question is how to apply this uh, translated language div to the 
original uh, I, I use in the style to create the price before. Oh, okay. So yeah. this is uh, supported by XML vendor. Yes. Thank you. And then by, by using this kind of structure, uh, translators uh, focus on the sort of difference uh, profile by five basis. And the X, so uh, difference XML file can be imported into the, this kind of a translation system and uh, uh, it can be automated. Uh, the, do you mean import uh, the original English version to this system? And uh, translated. Uh. No, no, no. So uh, uh, both works, but the, I think uh, so. Difference file yes. can be used. There's only a difference file can be used to import this yeah. kind of system. Okay. Is, so is that? Uh, I'm. I don't know. Is that? Uh, is there prior art for that? I mean, do, do other sites do it that way? Because um, I'm all in favor of stealing what other people have done whenever possible and not during the pain of developing stuff. I don't, I don't see that any other project uh, actually using this, but the uh, XLE file is uh, <coughs> uh, already popular. And uh, so uh, most of the translation system supports it. And uh, uh, yeah, so why not plus, yeah, of course, the some microsystems are using the, this kind of workflow. And the original file, and it's an XML based original file, and so uh, peel like XML file. So this combination can be used to build the original documents and the translated documents uh, using the uh, same original source. So the current PL flow, the uh, difficulty is the current, current uh, PL file workflow is uh, so um, copying back in the force. In the oh, in the two uh, so original documents and the translated documents and the, it's generated the PO file. So uh, when we use uh, PO file, so PO file is committed, but the PO file itself is not used in the building stage. So it is deprecated and uh, it's just there for backup purpose. Yeah. So uh, we can put the latest English document automatically. If we have uh, so difference, only difference uh, in the uh, uh, dip, um, XLIP file mm -hmm. next to the original document, so a uh, system can generate the uh, such a, a difference file automatically, and the translators can uh, import the, the file, right. and uh, so building system can detect uh, the translation is latest or not. Where uh, a uh, building system can track the English document is yes. so uh, by using a, a kind of a value number in the tag. So uh, it, I, I think it's simplified the uh, current appeal per floor and uh, uh, still uh, so uh, this kind of a better interface uh, for translation works with. Uh, 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 for long term, when even if we change the uh, the original structure, but I'm I'm concerned about uh, this this kind of a, a big change in the current uh, of three breaks that your uh, existing translation results yeah. in the system. If we change the tooling, uh, yeah. we probably need to find a way to convert the documents that are already translated. Yeah. I, and uh, there was something I've been thinking about. Um, we've been operating on this assumption that the original document is English, but I think I, I'm hoping to see at some point in the future where we're in the situation of having to translate the original document to English yeah. because it's come from some other contributors in, in, in language. In fact, uh, I think in uh, traditional Chinese, we already have a, a I'm, I'm not sure at or handbook or book is a uh, uh, traditional uh, Chinese uh, usage guide. I mean, how to set up your localization environment. Yeah, I think that's already in 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 VHTW directory. Yeah, but uh, I don't think that, I'm not sure uh, it is worth to to translate well, that into English. But I mean. Uh, the, the end goal of all this, or what I would like to see, would be 
uh, the original document can come from any contributors in any languages, and you'll end up with it translated to all, yeah. or at least as many as you possibly can of all the other languages, mm -hmm. because that would benefit everybody. And that's what I'm hoping to do. But I'm just saying, when I was doing that, I I put in in the uh, make PO uh, make file there was a check to see if you were in the English document directory and would say no, don't do it here, do it in your translated one. And then I, I remember Bosch took that out for some reason. I don't know why, but uh, uh, Benedict told me that saved him some effort at one point where he was in the wrong directory. Maybe we can have a. A field or a tag in in the make file says uh, this this file, for example, index dot us dot xml is the uh, original file, right. and uh, for other uh, article we can have a uh, index dot uh, dot xml as the the main source file, and uh, I guess uh, for that enough. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they can uh, choose any mm -hmm. language as the base language, right? Yes. Yeah. You can go from any to any other. Yes, you need a view. To solve that problem, you need a view from Chinese to Italian. Right. right. Uh, uh, again, yeah. 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 that's a nice, nice problem to have. <laughs> yeah, but for a base approach, we probably want yeah. to but, first. Yeah, we can translate to English first. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We just need to translate to English. Then all the workflow stays the same. Yeah, and then we, we just, just need, need one translation back to English. And then we just need more translators. Yeah. All right. But I think that the the game change here is if we have a web tool that help us to get more volunteers, it will be easier for us to generate more content. Because uh, trust me, it's much easier to convince a people to, to came and work for 20 minutes uh, while they are having lunch, for example, then learn subversion of XML or any other markup language just to do the translation. Uh, that was the game change for us. I was trying to translate the documents for Portuguese since 2012. Mm -hmm. And I did in six months what I was unable to do in six years. Just changing the tool. Uh, I think that this is a, a huge difference for the project. Well, and the uh, that pool of contributors doing translations eventually become reviewers and could eventually become doc reviewers. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. or ports committers <coughs> or source committers. But that's a, a way to engage people without a lot of overhead. You know, you go to a website and oh yeah, I can translate that sentence and now I'm done, but that was fun, so I'll be back and Yeah. We have one of the contributors in Brazil that use it to do the translation in this form in the mobile. <laughs> It's simple because it's just a web page. It's uh, a web responsible. Yeah. And now uh, I think over all the processes sounds very good to me. Uh, my only concern is if yeah because the 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 uh, I mean the 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 process or the the method you mentioned uh, sounds more uh, attractive uh, and. I want to know if we go with this one, how difficult if uh, we switch to not this? Stuff. I don't see a problem. Uh, we just need to find a way to convert the documents when we change. Right. And, uh, and so everything we should be, every translated the, the text should be saved in the translation memory. Yeah. yeah. So then you just have to hope that the whatever parses out those streams does it the same way. Yes. But hopefully in that time we already have enough uh, contributors to, to, to verify the results. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I think you know, I, I can put the uh, so uh, experimental directory tree that has been uh, give it a try to the experimental system. So right. I'll try. I will uh, create a prototype. Yeah, we can we just have a small article and uh, just yeah. play with that yeah. in the staging environment. Yeah. Okay. And if Zanaka doesn't work, we can find another web tool. Because the, the, I think that the main point is we need a web tool for the translation. Don't need to be Zanaka. It can be any other. Yeah. And there is many commercial tools on the, the market that are free for open source usage. But um, they don't usually give you the translation memory. No, they don't give. The transit bags. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, 
in Canada, just as administrator, administrators, we can export the translation manual. And the, the users don't have this permission. Uh, I, have you tried NAN pages? No. I would really, I mean, if we could do NAN pages, and it technically is possible. If, I know. if you can generate a PO file from the NAN page, for sure we can uh, do that. Uh, we it, it, it's possible to convert the uh, raw to XML. It, it, oh. There are a lot of tools. Oh, but uh, PO2A is supposed to do that for man pages already. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. haven't tested it. Yeah, okay. I, yeah. Do I was, you have to have that in the first place? Yeah. No, PO2A can do it, but I'm saying if you could do that, the rest of the world has kind of realized in the last few years what a gem man pages are. Yeah. They missed that when Linux split off and did info pages, which I. I would guess nobody has ever successfully used. Uh, I have. <laughs> I agree. Well, really, have you? Show me how, because <laughs> I've never got it. But uh, if we had a full translation of man pages, and there's a Japanese translation yeah. of man pages, I'll which it, those Japanese uh, translations. has to be just a, a mountain of work. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if we could do it through this same system, uh, we'd have it. I yeah. mean, yeah. For example, FebSense got in like one year 400 contributors. If we got that uh, to, to work uh, with translations, uh, it can take some time, but we are going to have the documents in other languages. Well, we need to progress. Yeah. So and it, progress. it's a way to involve people with the project, too, that uh, the yes. end of the wedge where they become involved in. You know, some of those become much more involved. Yeah, so I guess we have a real question. Like the question now is like how we will go on to this like on a yeah. documentation and engineering standpoint and on a cluster implementation standpoint. Oof. I'd say the first thing would be to ask core or for, for say what do we need to do for a proposal for this. I can get you working in that way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> like we had the, the three BSP community proposal thing, but there was no example, and so yeah, there are already three or four. Uh, I, that was something that I meant to touch on today: um, why a working group versus an FCP. Um, an FCP could be an outcome, uh, like a mandatory, like you know, result from a working group, as an example. But what happens in practice is an FCP becomes an individual effort, and whoever writes the bulk of that document guides the entire thing. And then it becomes a dysfunctional process to potentially massage and merge changes into it, as opposed to something that's fundamentally structured as a bit more collaborative, like a working group. Um, so an FCP will probably probably be around, but it probably won't be the first instrument that people will go pick up to go in and do something that's going to result in change. Yeah, I, I think uh, for uh, this point. Uh, uh, as I said, firstly, we just have a translated dash DEV, which means it's just a full raw concept. So after we prove this is very usable, we, I think then we, uh, we can have a FCP after that. Because I think FCP is for proposing a real, real change. And they have the Brazil Bank core links. This is the uh, certified standard of how we translate things in, in, in our project. Yeah. So the working group evaluates it and says, here's an FCP resulting from what we, this is what we propose. Yeah, the, right. the, yeah, the FCP would be the artifact of the working group. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, one thing I would like to mention is uh, uh, for creating. Uh, uh, Jenkins or a CI cluster, I don't have explicit uh, approval from core. So, but uh, yeah, because uh, that is just a, a proof of concept first, and uh, not everybody plays with that. But uh, after that, seems useful. We now we are we are put. I am push a FCP that uh, requires people uh, breaking out the the broken commit. Yeah, I mean, that's for FCP, that's just uh, for policy things. But uh, for this kind of thing, I, from my point of view of a uh, newest uh, cluster, we just need to 
make sure uh, this distance uh, is secure in, in the cluster. There's probably an operational component of this that needs to get looked at. Um, and I'll move this back up. I missed the first part of this, so I apologize. Um, the thoughts. I'm sorry. Uh, quick question on you mentioned if there's a better tool, that kind of thing. Is it is is has time stopped to where you guys are investigating other tools or uh, no. When we chose to use Zenata was mainly because DevSense was using for like one year and the results was good. And we just tried to replicate the model that they was uh, creating. I I looked at translation websites well it would have been around twenty fifteen and Poodle was out and People hated it, but they used it. And WebLeaf was out, and people liked it, but very few used it. It's a Django Python application. Poodle, I forget, it might be also. Yeah. Uh, and Zenata was new, I believe, at the time. And I remember seeing it, but I couldn't find a port, and there was no information on it. Yeah. And so I wasn't sure if it was going to sink or swim at the time, yeah. which is something that maybe ought to be also considered is how active is their developer community. but. Like you say, if you can export the translation memory, then presumably you could import that into something else. Yeah. Yeah. I've also tried a couple of like auto and uh, some commercial ones, which are not as good as this. So I mean, if we have a better tool belt, we'll move on. I think yeah. with all the machine learning stuff going on now, that uh, all these NLP. There's uh, TransFX has a thing like that, and it's their whole draw is that. You use our commercial translation portal, for lack of a better term, and you'll get people help translate things that you've never, that don't care at all about your project or comes from our translation memory, but you will never get that translation. You will get the translated document, but you will not be able to keep the translation memory, which maybe you could generate your own from the translated documents, but it's still, uh, I'm not sure. Or the business. So where possible, like how we get from point A to point B, somewhat imprecise, like indifferent. The fact that we get to point B, that's the important part. Right? And as long from a cost management perspective and a resource management perspective, that's when we suddenly start to care about, you know, the process of getting from A to B. Yeah. But um, in the grid, like if, if from a build versus buy perspective, from a project A versus project B perspective, like those are secondary, you know, factors relative to did we get the job done and move from point A to point B. So, um, pulling on the working memory of some of this stuff is, is important for some of that cost mitigation element of things, but not critical. Like the critical thing is the fact that we got the translation done. So. Well, but then if you have to switch to a different kind of platform, there's a switch you cost. can't recreate that translation. It's a, sw it's a switching cost. Well, yeah, but it can be the difference between oh, it, yeah, it's, it's tractable. It's tractable trivial or right. non-trivial. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> there are only those two kinds. Right. Well, I think that's it. Uh, the idea is just to tell a little about what we meant to God. Uh, and <coughs> in this last eight months that we was working with Sonata, the the tool helped us a lot to to move forward. The idea is to share the news with the community and let them know that they can do the same. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.